Well, I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Kenny Bailey, Chief Exec of London Scottish. Kenny, hi. Thank you for uh, taking the time out for, uh, for a chat today. Look, um, the reason for this chat is that March the 1st, you've been here a year. Yes. Now, just before we get into any sort of detail, tell us a little bit about your background in terms of your rugby CV. Played almost exclusively in Scotland. I represented Scotland from under 15 through to under 21. Uh, when I was playing for the under 21s team, we played a, a New Zealand representative side at Jedburgh in 1996 and we beat them, So, which was arguably the highlight of my career. Um, and what, what position did you play? Fullback. Fullback. In uh, that team, Scott Murray played, Barry Stewart played, uh, Cammy Murray played, Gordon Bullock. So, a uh, good side. Uh, enjoyable coach by David Leslie and John Rutherford as well, which was great fun. Probably the best uh, and most enjoyable 12 months uh, of my rugby career that year. Played five years at Edinburgh Ackies, so played Ackies twice this year, so it was nice to see old friends. Five years, sorry, ten years at Glasgow Hawks in Glasgow as well, where um, ultimately I cut my teeth in um, sports administration and sports management when I went from being a player to a volunteer director to being a uh, full time general manager um, there. and. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed that, and then from, from Glasgow Hawks, uh, the opportunity came up to, to go and join the SRU and work for the SRU running the Warriors. And so uh, I was CEO of the Warriors for two years as well, uh, and that was great fun as well. So I think we can say you've got a true Scottish rugby pedigree within yeah. yourself there. But obviously, I wasn't very good. <laughs> I, I think it was very modest. Yeah. In terms of your uh, commercial outside of rugby uh, CV, what, what have you done there? Well, Eight years in the software sector in Scotland, worked for a company called Graham Technology for five years and 18 months of those five years were setting up an office in Boston in Massachusetts, which was, uh, which was great fun. And actually while I was in Boston, I played for a club called the Boston Irish Wolfhounds. Um, a similar type of club to London Scottish in that they're an exile club, an Irish exile club in Boston. Uh, great people, great fun. Um, good rugby as well, they won the national championships that year. Um, because of you being in the side, I guess? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> But it was good fun, and uh, uh, yeah, and I got to see quite a lot of America as well. And um, that, you know, at that time, seventeen states through a bit of work in rugby was uh, was a great experience for me. And then uh, after rugby, between the Warriors and London Scottish, I um, worked for Westfield Shopping Towns, uh, so the big shopping centres at Shepherd's Bush and also out in Stratford. So during the Olympics, uh, it was a busy time uh, working for them out in Stratford and organising the shopping centre commercial activity. Um, around brand development and brand advertising um, for our American Express, Adidas, Samsung and British Gas um, were our four big clients I was looking after. So you worked with a lot of blue chip companies in, in your uh, sort of commercial career if you like and also a great uh, uh, grounding in rugby. So why did you want to come and work at London Scottish? I got a text message from uh, Kenny, Kenny Logan, um, in November 2012. and. Kenny said, Tony's moving on, uh, would you be interested in getting back into rugby? I knew Kenny from a time in Glasgow, um, and I kept touching him when he came down here. I met Rod, I met David, I um, was really taken by both of them and by the vision and ambition they had for London Scottish, and the opportunity to work for one of the world's most famous rugby clubs was just too good to turn down, really. So, you've been in a year now, uh, you obviously would have come in with some sort of idea of where you wanted to go and what you wanted to do, and how, how has that first year panned out for you, both off and on the pitch? Largely successful. Um, it's been great working with the board of directors that we have, led by David, uh, supported by, by Rod and all the other directors. It's, um, it's great to work with such a high calibre group of uh, individuals who are passionate about rugby and passionate about London Scottish, and many of them still passionate about Scottish rugby um, and hoping that we can help play a part in, uh, in helping Scottish rugby in the future. Um, but largely successful, you know, this is a, this is a club, it's a professional club that's playing in the Green King IPA Championship. And at this moment in time, we're fifth and we're fifth on merit and that's better than last year and it's better than the year before and real progress has been made on the pitch. Um, it was disappointing when Simon left uh, back in September, obviously. He had, he had to take the chance of going working in the sevens again and we wished him well. Um, but Simon left the legacy of, uh, of a really professional full-time uh, support staff and group of players that were motivated and fit and brought in good people like Tim Harper and Jenny Graham to look after strength, conditioning and, and physio. Um, and along with James Buckland they had uh, they'd knocked the boys into shape and we started the season extremely well. Um, all but bar Rotherham got a pretty unblemished uh, record here at Athletic Ground this year. Leeds was arguably one of the best 40 minutes of rugby I think I've ever watched in my life. Um, anyone that saw it that day was, we just, uh, 
everything clicked and, and that's that a sign of the level we can play at and we should be striving to play at all the time and we need to find that level of consistency. But fifth, we're fifth and mayor and we're still in with an outside chance of, of, uh, of getting into the top four and uh, we set ourselves that target at the start of the year and uh, the boys have um, performed well. Now you mentioned there about uh, helping develop players and actually we've done that too haven't we this season quite proudly uh, in terms of the players coming in the under-20s and so on. Yeah, Tommy Spinks, captain of Scotland in the 20s. I mean, what a feather in his cap for Tommy, but also great recognition for London Scots as well. When you look back at the history of the club, it's obvious that um, with the number of international players we've produced for Scotland and the number of British and Irish Lions captains, it's a club with an immense pedigree, and to have the captain of the Scotland 20 teams playing for London Scots again is, is wonderful for everybody involved. And congratulations to Tommy um, for that great achievement. Um, Tommy's been well supported. Um, Throughout his uh, time at London Scottish, um, and I know that Colin Grassy, who uh, at Deutsche Bank, has also been a big supporter of Tommy's, and I'm pleased with Colin as well that he's been able to go on and uh, represent Scotland by Captain Scotland as well. Uh, you mentioned uh, Colin Grassy and Deutsche Bank there, and it's very important to, for the club to have partnerships with people, for, apart from anything else from a financial point of view, but we've had some really good ones this year. Yeah, I mean, and David Reid and Tony and Rod and everyone that set up the Deutsche Bank partnership many years ago obviously deserve full credit for, for, for helping to secure that deal. But I mean, Deutsche Bank are an amazing sponsor and we're very, very lucky to have them. Um, we really, really are. I mean, uh, passionate supporters of London Scottish and you know, the team that we work with at Deutsche Bank are, are brilliant, you know, exceptional at what they do and um, very professional and we're very lucky to have it. And likewise with Aberdeen Asset Management. Mark McGilbert, Scotsman, really successful businessman in London um, and is supporting London Scottish too and Aberdeen and the team at Aberdeen are, are really supportive and have helped us in a number of ways and, okay. and obviously their sponsorship of Mark Bright um, is key. I mean anybody that watches London Scottish on match day, dare I say it, when you're thinking about man of the match probably the first name that would I crop into your, your head that you think about for most games is Mark Bright, is that consistent um, and without Aberdeen support. Um, but, yeah, potentially wouldn't be able to, to have Mark here, so it's really great that they're able to do it. Now look, we've, we've covered the success on uh, on the pitch. Off the pitch also the club is moving great strides. I mean, things like the St Andrews Day lunch, which was the first time we, we've held it so big this year, if you like, and we're going to carry on with that. Things like this, on the Scottish Hall of Fame dinner and so on. It's really stepping up off the pitch too. Yes, it is. A St Andrews Day in the Savoy was an amazing event for everybody that was there. We had 240 people, I think, was the final count. Um, we had some amazing entertainment and speeches, Jim Brown, Fiona Kennedy, Ruri, and then Frank Mackay, who's a wonderful supporter of London Scottish, to, to see the event off at the end, and, and, and well supported by Fred, Fred McCauley, the auctioneer, who raised a lot of money for charity on the day, people had great fun. You know, we had Alex McLeish there, um, Bernard Gallagher, Sam Torrance, and then not to mention we, we created the inaugural um, Great, Scott, Great London Scott Awards. And so to have Judy Murray there collecting an award on behalf of Andy was, I mean, it was inspirational. And uh, we're very lucky that we were able to, to have her presence. And this year, November again, this year, we're going to run it again the 28th of November. And um, we hope it'll be bigger and better. It's an event that everyone at London Scottish can be proud of. And I think that's a date to definitely put in the diary because we know that that will be probably oversubscribed. <laughs> and looking forward now in terms of the strategy going forward, where, where, where do you want to be in the next few years? Well, as a board, we are really focused on four big boulders um, to move the club forward um, within a professional framework. And, and the four big boulders are top four. We want to be a regular top four championship club. We're hoping we can achieve that this year, um, but we'll definitely be looking to do that next year. We want to be recognised, um, along with many of the other sort of bigger, more established championship clubs as a publicly recognised top four championship club. So that means investment in the squad, investment in the coaching, investment in the support staff. And we've done that. Um, you know, I think our supporters should be pleased to, to know that next year's squad will we hope be better than this year. Um, the support around the players will be better than this year. And um, the facilities available to the players and the staff will be better than this year. So. We're hoping with all these little bits of the jigsaw um, that, that ultimately that transfers to, to more wins on the pitch. Um, you know, stadium development. We we are working with Richmond Athletic Association, who are a landlord, and Richmond Football Club to, to try and upgrade the facilities here to, to bring it up to standard for a championship club and good positive discussions are taking place with the RAE and also with Richmond as well. 
about how we can improve the facilities here for not just the next few years but for potentially the next 100 years. And uh, you know, London Scottish here, the Richmond Athletic Ground is definitely where we want to be. Um, number three, Academy, uh, led by Cornish Grant, who's done a fantastic job with the Academy, well supported by, by Rod and many of the others on the, on the Amateur Club Committee. Um, you know, we want to produce those players. Pleased to say that this year, uh, young Ben Pattenden, who's part of the academy, has sat on the bench for the professional team a couple of times, that's good news. And then recently, uh, Buckin Richardson, who's the son of former club captain Charlie Richardson. And Buckin's also playing with Tommy Spinks in the under-20s uh, games. Buckin has trained with the first team recently and shown up very well. And I know that James Buckland and Mike Friday have been really impressed by him. So if we can have more of that, uh, more of these players coming, joining our academy and going on to play for the first 15, then it will help develop the culture and uh, just produce, uh, producing more players is the right thing to do as well. So hopefully attracting more players to the club and joining the club. And then number four is membership, season tickets. We've got just under a thousand season ticket holders just now. And we need, we need that to be 3,000. We need 3,000 season ticket holders. And we know that 3,000 is the number that season ticket holders are matched the attendance that is required to be a sustainable club in the championship. Um, so that's what we need to try and develop over the next three, four, five years is to get our a season ticket holders up from 1,000 to 3,000. And uh, this year's season ticket membership programme will be uh, hopefully appealing to many London Scots that they want to come down and watch. Uh, good rugby on a Saturday afternoon. Brilliant. Well, look, you've been very open and very honest. I know you're a very approachable guy, and, and surely on match days you're always here, and obviously you're always here during the week as well. But if people have got ideas or suggestions, you're quite open to, to speaking to people and receiving those, aren't you? Absolutely. I mean, I don't have all the answers, that's for sure. Um, if you did, you'd be sitting on an island somewhere in the sun, I expect. Not in this weather. <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah, no, always happy to, uh, to speak to any member or supporter, and if they've got an idea, then really happy to, to listen to that and hopefully we can act on it um, but you know, I'd just like to thank your supporters those that have come down this year have really got behind the team I'd like to thank all the volunteers that we have on match day there are a number of people on match day that really without their support um, the events wouldn't happen mostly Ian Smiley and Hilary Smiley who work on the, uh, the ticket desk really a huge thanks to them um, Angus Stewart um, who really does help a lot on match day as well and then also to my team Well listen, congratulations on your first year I mean if it's coincidental then it's incredible if it's down to you the playing's got better even better, I'm sure it isn't, it's down to the whole team effort of everybody involved but uh, Kenny, thank you for your time no. and um, well, we look forward to speaking maybe in another year's time see where we are then. Thanks David, thank you Bye.